I was like the dumbest person ever. I used to just spend money on everything. Man, please. Yeah. Please. I'm, I'm going to open up insurance, put two, three million in my insurance, and borrow from that and put it back in. Okay, so again, back to Dave Ramsey's conversation. This is what Dave Ramsey has wrong. This is what a lot of people have wrong about what life insurance is all about. What he's talking about is what you'd be kind of stupid to put two, three million dollars into a life insurance policy. Isn't life insurance only for when you die? What he's talking about here is life insurance for you to live. The living benefits of life insurance, not just the death benefits of life insurance. So it is April, which is Financial Literacy Month. I often get asked in 23 years of business, Matt, who is your biggest competitor? It's not a who, it's actually a what. And that what is a lack of financial literacy. So many people get jaded about the financial decision they make based on how they grew up with it, their neighborhood, how their friends and family deal with it. Maybe they got a uh, wind of it of watching a video here and there. But Financial Literacy Month, sadly, is not in our school system. And therefore, we have these generations upon generations upon generations that are making foolish financial decisions. And so in this episode, we're going to be breaking down a video that was shared with me many times throughout our organization about Waka Flocka talking about financial literacy and what he has woken up to in terms of understanding how money works. So let's take a look at this video. Well, it's good that you're not taking that path. So once you have 30 mil and you decide that you're ready to be a billionaire. I'm going to blow it. What are, no, my no, mom was like, yeah. I swear, I'm telling you. My mom said, I'm going to blow this. But <laughs> And by the way, it could be your tax refund check. You're going to blow it. It could be your paycheck that you get this weekend. You're going to blow it. And I'm wondering why he's already saying he's got $30 million. Why is he going to blow it? I wonder what his thought process is. He didn't. Who? I, Did you blow I blew the 30? it on success. And now I know I'm not ever going to go broke. What the, what, what? What is 30 million to a millionaire? When you get a million, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, I it's understand nothing. how easy we were talking yesterday. That's right. 30, yeah, 30 million is nothing. Listen, making seven figures... People think, man, I just, you just want to be rich, wealthy, making seven figures. I'll, I'll tell you this. My wife and I, we got five kids. We take care of both of our families on the, on the parents' side and the uh, in-laws. We have things we do here with our local church. We got things that we do in our community. There's things that we do in our own investments. I will tell you this. Seven figures is no big deal. In fact, it's actually going to be a future, in a short near future, a necessity for you to actually start paying the bills and rise up a little bit and have a little bit of breathing room. People often think that, oh, you just want to be rich wealth because you want to be seven figures. Based on where money is going today, making seven figures is no big deal. About just overhead costs of being an artist, how much money goes out every month, taking besides care of your people. That, but then how do, you, how do you take those steps to become a billionaire? That's a great goal. You said you're trying to do this in the next couple of years. How do you decide what businesses you- and By the way, being a billionaire, it's only 1,000 million. So if you know how to make 1 million, you know how to make 5 million, you know how to make 10 million. It might take your whole entire lifetime, 20, 30, 40, 50 years to become a billionaire. But it's not something that it's so unattainable that you just can't reach. As long as you have a plan, you have a vision to get there, and you're willing to work towards it, making a thousand million, which is a billion, is no big deal. You want to invest in? Do you have to go out and get other advisors? Or are you wealth. still working with your people? Cycle and wealth. It's like for me, right? If I got $30 million, the first people who will come to me is uh, business managers, CPAs, mm -hmm. advisors, and all this. How do I know you're not advising me to give my money to all your classmates? Right. Mm, it's a very good point. Very good point. Because I, I remember uh, in, in that situation where one person leads to this person, leads to this person. Oh, you need the services of this person. You need the services of this person. You need the services of this person. Listen, I like the skeptical look he has here. Mm. You know, I got cheated by two uh, accountants, three CPAs, and one business manager. Cheated me out my money. Happens Cold very person. often. I even got cheated from my own aunt. To file my taxes and then file them. Like, it's real. Like file my tax and then file them. By the way, the same thing happened, I believe, to Steve Harvey. The accountants, the CPAs that you trust to do the work, and they didn't do the work, or they skimmed that money to go into different accounts, different deposits. I think, again, that's what happened to Steve Harvey, too, as well. You have to trust, but at the same time, verify. Real, like, folks, is taking your money. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just how it's going. And then you just spending your money thinking you rich. Like. That's why we often say it's not necessarily you learning from your good experiences with money. It's about you learning from the bad experiences of money, with money. And the way you can learn for your bad experiences with money is not to wait on you to make bad experiences with money. That's why you want counselors. Because a person that's in a capacity of them rising up and realizing, wow, I need some wise counsel. I need to surround myself with people that have been there, done that, have already made these mistakes. So by the time I get to these crossroads, oh, you know, my, my boys have already made that type of mistake. Okay, I remember this situation. They told me to watch out for this. They told me to watch out for this. 
They told me to watch out for this. It's coming. Now it's came. The day has come that this situation has come. Boom. I'm anticipating it because actually wealth building is nothing more than just anticipation and managing expectations. Playing about because I wanted to be independent because I didn't want, I, I wanted to learn my mistakes and educate myself on my mistakes. Mm. Mm. That's all my education come from is self mistakes. Okay. By the way, Waka Flocka, love you, man. But I think a lot of people try to make this headway too as well. There's my mistakes are things that I learn. If you really want to get ahead, this is where literacy comes in. You have to understand that people have been down this road, may not be the same exact talent or same exact steps. There's parallels to this thing, but you need to start surrounding yourself with counselors. In Proverbs 15, chapter 22, it reads like this. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. So if you want success in your plans, in your guidance, you have to have the input of counselors. And sometimes what we learned spending some time in Tom Brady's house, we were just this past weekend in, in Foxborough at Gillette Stadium. So right in front of us is two Super Bowl champions. One won twice with Tom Brady, uh, Rob Ninkovich, and the other one was his left tackle protecting his blind side, which is Matt Light. And also we heard simultaneously from his business manager of TB12, Rob. So we learned from all three of them. So these are three people that Brady was in Brady's life. One won three Super Bowls with Brady, one won two. One was his business manager, TB12, and everything that he, get, he gets done. Tom's got a multitude of counselors for his brand, his evolution as a player for it to succeed because if you think you're going to learn from your mistakes and I'm going to wait to make my mistake before I learn them, you're already in a road of desperation, you're reactive, you're responding to the situation, and you're more defensive versus playing offense. Let's take a look at what else he has to say. And I learned from him. I took all, I, I took all, all the notes down. I'm like, damn, that's why I messed up. That's what she cheated me. By the way, very good on the evaluation process. I'm glad he, looks, he took time and said, listen, what's the good? What's the bad? What's the ugly? Why did this happen in my life? Very good wise in terms of self-reflection. Oftentimes people say, ah, I'm just going to go through it. I'm just going to deal with it. I'm just going to wing it. At least he took some notes to make sure that uh, he doesn't forget the pain of these top crises. I'm not even gonna get mad, thank you. You know what I'm saying? I just took, I know I could get money. I'm not worrying about it. it I have not made, since I start rapping, this ain't bright. I have not made profit less than $5 million a year. I love it, man. I love it. Once you understand the money, look at the, look at the confidence in his face. I've, once he learned the game, once he learned his industry, he has not profited less than $5 million a year. I could live today right now with four grand a month, five grand a month. Mm. I could live happily right now. Is this? What? Could I? You could live. Can, can't you live with $10,000 a month? Yeah, of course. But you, Guess you, still, you still move around a certain type of ways. I, you're not, you, are you moving around like you regular, regular, though? Bro, I'm not flat, bro. I don't like whips. I'm not, I'm, I'm not like that, bro. <laughs> it's, that's true, by the way. I'll tell you this. Truth be told, yeah, one of my... Best videos out there is in terms of me driving around in Rolls Royce for 25 bucks a month. Let's check out right here if you haven't seen it yet. But I tell you this, after buying exotic cars, buying a, a, a Rolls Royce, et cetera, et cetera, all that, my friends got Lambos and Ferraris. After a while, after hitting that type of echelon and, and, and goal that you've hit from a material standpoint, I'll tell you this, it gets old real quick. You get bored. You reach that road and you're like, okay, what's next, what's next? If there's not any significance or plan behind the next move, you just, you just get bored at a certain level. Bro, I like a good house. You know what I'm I, saying? I, I like eating like, when I want to. I like when you post it. You be posting your stock portfolio. This has been a bad what? week this week. That's what this I week like. Too. But it's going to go right up. It's a good week to buy. You dig what I'm saying? Like I like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I grew up with a family that had millions. But by the way, that's, that's just maturity. The, he has experienced the level of maturity that I think once you get older in life, once you get that that that. If you can like leapfrog that phase of materialism and status and realize it's not all it's cracked up to be, and you get onto the maturation phase of what life is really all about, that only happens around the people that you surround yourself with. If you hang around a bunch of people that, that, that validate that cars and whips and clubs and status and power, that's what it's all about, right? That's all you're gonna get. But once you graduate that and you figure out what's next, what's the most valuable things in life, then you discover what true wealth is. And I think that's what Waka Flock is experiencing right now. A little 300,000 would have right turned now. to like 3 or million Amazon. right now. Damn. I sold too Quit. early. That was stupid. You could, like if you had a million dollars or $3 million in Marilyn Lynch, you'd have won last year. You'd probably made over 100 bands mm -hmm. for the year. As, as a fellow dad, is this something you're teaching? By the way, you, you say what he said there. If you had a one to two to $3 million at a Merrill Lynch account, 
you got 100 bands last year. Okay, that's a 10% return. But think about this real quick. That's $100,000 that you would earn just by simply investing it and having the professional advisors on your team grow it and make money off of it. And you'd have to work for your $100,000. So this is the reason when I read my first financial literacy book, which is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, his first rule in that book says that the rich never work for money. Their money works for them. So going forward, not only in financial literacy month, but for the rest of your life, do you want you to be working for your money or do you want your money to be working for you? Question you gotta ask yourself. Teaching your daughter too? It's too early. Too early? She, too early. You teach her to save she pick, Your kids pick up on habits, not on words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. He said kids pick up on habits, not on words. It doesn't matter what you say, mom or dad. You want me to save? You want me to uh, do well in school? Do you want to see me succeed in life? Great. Can I see you doing it too? Oftentimes I see so many parents putting so much pressure on the children to excel and do well in life, but yet mom and dad aren't putting themselves under pressure and succeeding and winning in life and elevating themselves too as well simultaneously. So one of the most inspiring things that I saw growing up was my mother was willing to get her education and get her master's in nursing while my sister and I were going through school. And she made a joke one time at the dinner table, said, hey, by the time I graduate with my master's in nursing, of course, that means I'm Filipino. <laughs> Once I graduate from my master's in nursing, Matt, she pointed at me, you'll be graduating from high school. And Joe, my sister, you'll be graduating from eighth grade. So one year, we'll all be graduating together. You see, that excited me. That fired me up that we had all a goal that we're working towards together. So what goal, if you're watching this and you're a mom, your dad, your parent, you're, even you're a grandparent, are you setting an example for your children by not what you say, but more so about what you do? What are you winning on in life? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's all his habits. I just pay attention to habits. And uh, one day I heard a friend of mine was like, yo, man, uh, I went to school for being a financial historian. I'm like, financial what historian? Yeah. Hey, what is that? that? I'm like, you know, I'm asking. I'm like, bro, I don't know what that is. What is that? Yeah. He's like, bro, we study rich people's spending habits. Mm. I was like, oh. Okay. Snap. Okay. Good. So what are they? <laughs> I just start following what people do. I'm like, oh, and you start seeing parallels and charts and this and that. I'm like, I'm like, how did I learn this? Financial history. Cause I, cause I, I want to win, bro. That's it, man. Again, success leaves clues. What clues are you following? How to win? I'm telling y'all right now. Anything I do, not to look over my shoulder, I'm down with it. Mm. It's easy. Once I, and I, once I learned the credit game, mm. it was over. Yep. Game was over. Yep. When I know I had all the millions, and I didn't even have. That, by the way, that's why. That's why in previous videos, I've always mentioned that Dave Ramsey is wrong about when it comes to credit. Dave Ramsey is wrong about life insurance. They're wrong about a lot of things. Here's what I do credit them for, for lack of a better term. I do credit them for having, teaching the right mindset for people that are just beginning the money game. But in today's day and age, yes, you do need credit. You can argue with this all you like. If you do not have credit and you're an adult in today's game, your, your, your decisions are down the road, it would be much tougher than if you did have positive credit. You need credit. And I'm not saying, hey, get a bunch of credit cards to charge up and overspend and live a life that you know you can't afford and can't pay back. That's not what I'm talking about. You need credit to open up opportunities because in today's day and age, credit is queen only to cash flow, which is king. I was like the dumbest person ever. I used to just spend money on everything. Man, please. Yeah. Please. I'm, I'm going to open up insurance, put two, three million of my insurance and borrow from that and put it back in. Okay, so again, back to Dave Ramsey's conversation. This is what Dave Ramsey has wrong. This is what a lot of people have wrong about what life insurance is all about. What he's talking about is what, well, you'd be kind of stupid to put two, three million dollars into a life insurance policy. Isn't life insurance only for when you die? What he's talking about here is life insurance for you to live. The living benefits of life insurance, not just the death benefits of life insurance. Death benefit is only one of the three major aspects of why you need to use and have life insurance in your portfolio today. Obviously, if you die too soon, boom, life insurance is there. But what happens if you've lived long? What happens if you survive a heart attack, stroke, or cancer? That's what life insurance, living benefits of life insurance provide. Because inside a life insurance policy, if you allow this money to grow, according to IRS code 7702, money that grows inside a life insurance policy grows without paying a dime in tax can be accessed without paying a dime in tax. Only thing that expands in value to pass on to the next generation without paying a dime in tax. 72E talks about the tax treatment of favorable, tax favored life insurance. There's so many different areas of life insurance that obviously he's picked up after surrounding himself with wise counselors. Again, life insurance is not a religion, so you don't have to believe in it. 
Because oftentimes people say, I don't believe in life insurance. That's, that's why I don't get it. It's not a religion. It's a financial vehicle for you to be more smart with your finances. Again, that's what rich people do. I never lose my money, ever. Mm -hmm. Anybody get money, I'm giving you a promissory note. Because you go promise to pay this back. I'm going to bring you to court. I'm ready for the, <laughs> the Walker Financial. <laughs> I'm saying you. And by the way, who's the best at loaning out money? You know what it is? It's the life insurance companies. You don't, you don't think so? Well, guess who the biggest fund, funder and financiers are of mortgages out there? It's insurance companies. Where I come from in Chicago, now I'm in Dallas. Matter of fact, right down here in Dallas, right across the street from in and out is National Life Group in Zurich. Two life insurance companies right here in Addison, Texas. Where I'm from in Chicago, Majority of the biggest buildings in downtown Chicago, hello, are owned by, yes, life insurance companies. Met Life. Where do you think the New York Jets and the New York Giants play? Met Life Stadium. New York Life Insurance Company. Some of the biggest and baddest, but most silent, wealthiest companies in America are who? Life insurance companies. And Waka Flocka just tapped into the wisdom of what rich people have done with life insurance throughout their portfolios to not only grow wealth, but to pass it on to the next generation in the most tax efficient way possible. Because they want to get the biggest enemy they have in their finances out of their pocket, out of their hair, which is who? Uncle Sam. So good job on Waka Flocka educating himself and passing on his knowledge through Financial Literacy Month here on this podcast. The Waka Financial. I'm, I'm saying, yeah, you should do the, the live seminars. Be I you, don't need, you don't need cameras there. You're right. Just keep it like small with people yeah. who want to come to learn. And I let them cut the cameras on. Yeah. So, yeah. so you didn't go through a stage of like you being rich, then you falling flat broke to realize. Definitely. To Definitely. I went, yo, bro, I went broke. After you got rich? One time. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. He's reminding me of my story. How many guys have said, I'm going to get to a certain stage in life and I fall flat broke and I taste that pain. I experience the agony, the embarrassment, the public humility and say, I'll never experience this ever before in my life. How many guys would say that? Well, that was me. That was 1996 for me. Came back from deployment. Ex-wife had charged up a bunch of credit cards. I filed bankruptcy in 1996. I said, this is the last time that will ever happen to me ever again. And guess what? It's never happened to me. Why? Because I recognize the behaviors and the bad things I should avoid ever to happen in my life ever again. And so I think he's experienced this because you only need to experience that one time. Now, here's the challenge, though. There's two choices, bro. You got a choice to be broke or a choice to be poor. Both these situations all have to do with your habits and how you think money. Because when I was broke, I recognized that this was a temporary situation. I can get myself out of this. I'm broke, though, temporarily. Eventually, I'll no longer be broke. Whether it be six months, whether it be 60 days, whether it be one year or two years, I'm no longer going to be broke. That's a temporary condition. Now, being poor, that's more of an attitude. It's more of a spirit. It's more permanent. And sad thing about being poor, this can be transferred and changed from generation to generations. Again, would you rather be broke or would you rather be poor? The choice is yours. Let's hear what Walker Flock has said about being broke. Oh, yeah, broke. Bro, what's broke to you, though? Because he's coming from a guy that said, I can make five million bucks down to 30,000 out of 20. That's broke, broke to him. For some of you, being broke, broke may be down to your last 300 bucks. Maybe down to your last 30 bucks. It's all relative, okay? So don't say, oh, shame on him for you because he thinks he's only broke at 30,000 bucks. Listen, it's all relative. Type like, you know what I'm saying? I try to live off the hustle, mm. and but people was making me go broke. Like people I loved. And it got to a point where it's like, yo, y'all love what I'm doing for you. You actually don't love me. Because I had to go back in my mind, like, nobody want their kids to hang around me. Mm. What an interesting point that they want to hang around him, but they want their kids to hang around him because they would hang around him from what he's saying because based on what he can provide them when he was doing shows or doing his thing and keeping the wrong company around him made him broke. Check out this proverb from King Solomon. It reads like this. Keep company with the wise and you will become wise. If you make friends with stupid people, you will be ruined. <laughs> no, these aren't mean tweets. This is from the book of Proverbs. This is the OG mean tweets by King Solomon who's regarded as the wisest and richest king who ever lived. Y'all didn't invite me to like Disney World trips and stuff like this? <laughs> so what am I doing? Let me stop being fake. It's, it's a dub. And then, and then Tammy came around. When Tammy came around, I'm telling you, it was like a scapegoat. I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to be in love, it's over. And once, once Tammy came in, you start seeing everybody move out. You know what I'm saying? I got real family oriented, because Charlie started growing up. The man started coming in me. 
And I'm like, wow, yo, man, I actually need to stop smoking weed a lot. Stop doing this. Stop going out. Stop doing this. And Charlie made me realize, bro, like, yo. So how many guys think that financial literacy is not more than just financial literacy? It's really a growth of your individual values and principles of what you really want to achieve in your life. See, money is just simply that. Money is just simply a tool. Money is going to manifest what's ever inside your heart and your spirit right now. If you got a heart and spirit, you just want to party, you want to smoke weed, you want to play video games all your life, guess what money's going to do when you get it? It's going to expose and magnify that. But if you say, man, I got a family, I got a lady I want to take care of, I got a family I want to raise, I got some children I want them to look up to me, I want my family to be proud of me, I want to fight to earn the respect and admiration, well, guess what? Money's going to magnify that. So financial literacy, not just understanding about money, which is important, but I think one of the most important things for you to pick up if you're watching this video is to discover who you are. What values and principles do you stand on? What are your negotiables? What's your non-negotiables? Five years from now, what's your life going to look like? Ten years, what's your life going to look like? And will your money allow you to fund and finance that dream, that goal, that vision that you have in your life? If not, if you can't see further than six inches in front of your face, it's what you're about to do this weekend or what you're about to do, I don't know, at the end of the month, you're just living from year to year or paycheck to paycheck, whatever the case may be, you're not going to experience much fun in your life. It's going to be very, very shallow. So what Waka Flock is experiencing right now, I think, is his maturation as a man, the vision he starts seeing of himself, how it's to be recognized and how it's to be seen long term. He achieved the fame, he achieved the success. Amen. Hallelujah to that. But now, what does life really mean? And now I need to get financially smart about how to get there because if I don't get there with my money, the dreams and goals and vision that I want to accomplish in my life will not become true. Simple as that. And Charlie made me realize, bro, like, yo, when she turned 18, I don't want her leaning on a, on a rich dude. See, that, that's nah, it. lean on your pop. Lean on your pop. See, that's the thing. The vision that he had for his daughter. I want you to be solid in who you are, young lady, that you're not leaning on another man. I want you to lean on your father, your dad, that wants nothing from you, but's willing to give you everything. And the standard of you as a woman is reflected upon your relationship with your father. That's what he wants. That's what he wants from his daughter. He wants his uh, a daughter to be proud of herself and the family that she comes from. Yeah. And so that, that's what helped me out, my family. Young guys like Southsides and these guys, like watching their career go all the way up, like, damn, I, 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 can I take you all the way up there, bro? Or can I take you over the hoop when you get over there? That's what I want to do. Uh, so now Southside got all the money. I'm like, so it's just not putting them on. It's just not putting people on. It's not just getting people to that initial level of success, but really what they are establishing for their entire life. Love it. I love where this guy's coming from. I, I, I tell you this. I don't know much about Waka Flock as a man. I know a little bit about his music because some of his songs with my team started playing them for him. He's like, oh, yeah, I know these songs. But now I get to know him. Who knows, man? We might have him at a future conference at uh, Seven Fear Squad. Who knows? Let's get to 250000 something to find out. Hey, look, Lou, bro. Let's, you know what I mean? That's what I want. I want to sit at the table with all my friends like this. Like, hey, all of us, let's put a, let's put a million in. Mm. Get $4 million all the fun. Go buy a whole block. That's, oh, that's exact. I love this. Think about this. If you start mastering your money, okay, and you start hanging around your friends, and you're putting your finances together, and not only are you hoping that things get around you better, but if they're not, well, once you invest in that block, once you invest in that neighborhood, you buy up a whole two, three, four blocks of properties and communities that you have with your private equity fund, whatever case may be, your, your hedge fund, your real estate investment trust, whatever you want to do with your buddies, the people that you're hanging around with, you put your finance together, now you're investors in the community. That's why it's not about just you just getting rich. It's about you getting rich to a point where you can really make some impact in your home, in your backyard, in your community, in your city, in your country. That's the value and principle that he's talking about. Oftentimes people are hoping and waiting for the wrong people to help them, which is politicians and their boss. You need to be helping yourself. Go get a fix and flip along with that. That's gangster. And I'm dressed like this. I'm in a meeting just like this while people got suits on. Yeah, just, yeah flip flops. Probably. I got some Burks on. I love Burks. I got to do all deals in Birkenstock. So it took it, it took a good woman to straighten you up? Yeah, that was part of the plan. Yeah. It def, and fans, though, I ain't going to lie, bro. The people that support me, bro, is everything. Mm -hmm. Like a lot, of my, a lot of my information came from fans. Here's why. Not only does a good woman keep you in check, keep you in line. Here's what the good book says about a wife. Proverbs 18, verse 22 reads like this. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. 
Another one from Proverbs chapter 31. It reads like this. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. By the way, continue reading Proverbs chapter 31. It helps you identify what type of woman you should be looking for and what has obviously entered into Waka Flocka's life. And on top of that, he's talking about fans. Well, here's the thing about fans. If you care enough about your fans, you care enough about your customer base, you care enough about the people that you serve as a business, your fans, your customers, your clients, they'll hold you accountable. They'll hold you to a point where you need to be better, that you're upstanding in your business dealings because whatever product or service that you're providing them, they want to continue that product or service through you because you're making their life better to some extent. So yes, your fans, your customers, your clients, they keep you in check if you're willing to continue to serve them. Like, bro, you check this out. Yo, check this out. Oh, meeting people. Like, yo, I'm in school for this. I'm like, word, cool. I'm just keeping in touch with you. Yeah. Like so many people I met that was in college, like, bro, they, they actually like CEOs and they develop skills in life and they actually my friend now. Wow. And we actually do and business. You weren't too arrogant to like listen? No, sometimes I, like that money make you arrogant. I learned, like, man, yeah, I learned stocks fuck. from a guy that's nine years younger than me. Literally. A college kid. At a frat show. And By the way, just so you guys know, my whole social media team is what? You, how, how younger are you guys than me? 20? Plus? So how old are you, Malcolm? 20? So I'm 23 years older than Malcolm and I'm 25 old. My whole, guys, if you love what the social media team does here at Seven Figure Squad, they're 23 plus years younger than me. And I, I, somebody just said, hey, you gotta learn from people that are, that are younger than you. Hey, more power to them. And I just feel blessed enough to be able to create them a job. Now it's my job to make sure I keep them gainfully employed. And that's why I want our social media team to continue, to, or social media channels to continue to grow. So therefore our social media team continues to grow and expand because we're creating jobs. We're blessing people so therefore they can pay their bills and put food on the table and a roof over the head. That's what business people and entrepreneurs are supposed to do. Doesn't matter how young or old they are. Good God, the, the, my, my mentor, Patrick B. Davis, five years younger than me. You guys know who he is, host of Value Tainment. We just came back from many, many trips so, so far this year. Doesn't matter. And by the way, I, I serve clients that are 67 years old. There's a guy that was on my uh, coffee channel uh, that we do mentoring over coffee via Zoom. And he's, man, I'm 66 years old. I got three, four, five different businesses I want to go do. Why should I consider expanding my career into the insurance business? Because obviously I see the profitability of it. Should I consider expanding this more than my other businesses? He was asking counsel for me. He was 48 years old and he's 66. So it doesn't matter what you should care about and be concerned about are people's understanding and where they come from from a wisdom standpoint. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is nothing more than education times experience. That's knowledge. That's wisdom. And here's what King Solomon says about wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5, it reads like this. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will give a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. So for those of you watching this, this is obviously what Waka Flock has been getting. And look at the joy and the contentment and the feeling of bliss that he has on his face because he started understanding money and understanding what the power of a good woman in his life, family, being aligned to the desires of his fans and what he's, the music that he's putting out, the content he's putting out, the people that he's putting on and showing up to get over the top to not only have a great career, but have an amazing life. And he was like the only black, you know how he got that black out of yeah. sound white? <laughs> oh, One of those guys. He's like, dude, why are you not doing this, man? You know, with your kind of status and, man, you can have a pool of people. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, let me see how I look. Yeah. I started seeing the numbers. I'm like, damn. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, all right. Well, I went home, was like, got on YouTube, how to do stocks. <laughs> what is QuickBooks? That's how I learned QuickBooks, everything, all of YouTube tutorials. Literally. And by the way, it just goes to show for people out there that think you don't need resources or there's no resource for you to tap into and how to get rich and how to get wealthy. Hello, what do you think Waka Flock is accessing? YouTube, anything, the thing that we, the crazy part about where we're at today in life is that anything you want to get, anything, and how to get it is all on YouTube. Please use that gift that you have today. I wish I had this resource when it was coming up in the 90s, early 2000s. 
Literally. I learned all this off YouTube and Google and reading. Mm -hmm. Reading uh, accounting for dummies. Mm -hmm. Stocks for dummies. It's easy, bro. All you do is read. And I had the money to gamble it. So I was like, there's nothing. How do, you, how do we get this, like, this shit told? Like, how, you know, it's always the messenger. How, do, how are we able to give this information to the hood? You know what I mean? And put it in a way where they can accept trust it. Trust me. That's all I tell people. Yeah. Just the way you trust everybody, trust me. I guarantee you I ain't gonna crook you. Mm. I guarantee you. I guarantee I'm gonna come to your barbecue with your kids. Mm. Trust me, that's all. So should we do the I'm little I'm tired of giving my game tour? away. Yeah. Man, come, hey, believe me, bro. Yeah. That's all I can tell you. That's your big homie. Hey, come here. Mm. Let me show you. Buzz, I love that question. How do we get this information to the hood? Because it's obvious that the politicians, the school boards won't include financial education, financial literacy in the school system. So how do we get in the hood? Just like this, examples of success rising to levels of potential celebrity or status or being a quote unquote influencer. Can you go back in the hood? That's why the company that we've built, the channel that we're creating is reaching out to the multicultural middle class. Cause we can speak hood, we're from the hood, we know the hood, we can lift up out of the hood. You help the hood just might not stay in the hood. You go extend an example, go out there, make your money. It might force you to live in a different neighborhood for the time being, but you go back to the hood and you do your job to help people rise up. Now it's up to them to want to rise up to as well. If they don't want to rise up, that's on them. But you just done your part to do your example, to set an example of what it takes to get up out of the hood. And then who knows, you could be an investor in the hood. You create jobs by buying real estate, by starting stores and businesses in the hood with the help of the politicians that put resources of the state and the federal government to work for you, to create tax incentives for you to establish a business in the hood. Because here's one thing. One interview you did with a two-time felon, Ryan Stuman, hardcore clothes on Instagram. He said, they're trying to recruit me into the Aryan Brotherhood in prison. But one thing I was teaching guys in prison, whether you're a black gang or Latino gang, I was teaching people entrepreneurship. I was teaching people money that instead of hurting each other to steal from one another, get money, that they can do business together, they can have commerce together. And he said, for those six months, for those six months, for a period of six months, nobody was murdering anybody, nobody's hurting nobody, because everybody was working together. Because at that time in the prison, it was about one color. And that was the color of money. And everybody's winning together, and everybody's succeeding together. It's what happens when you learn the rules of the money game. So with that being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments, your feedback. What do you think about what Waka Flocka had just said? Does this inspire you to be an entrepreneur? Does it inspire you to master the rules of the money game? Does this inspire you to be a bigger earner and contributor to your family, into your city, into your community? Does it inspire you to do greater and bigger things? Because that's how you're gonna get this information into the hood. Because oftentimes people see that the only success stories are people dribbling basketball or playing football or uh, behind the mic. In my opinion, the real day-to-day -day superheroes outside of our first responders, inside of our military veterans out there, and service members, are entrepreneurs. I believe that those on a day-to-day -day basis that just wanna stick their neck out put their life savings on the line by putting a product or service out there that people want to buy so therefore they can not only create sales or move products or services, but also create jobs for people that work for them. I believe that those are the local day-to-day -day unsung heroes of America. So before I let you go, please let me know in the comments section below what other videos you want me to react to because we've had a lot of great response from people saying, man, I love your reaction videos to these celebrities or entertainers or whatever the case may be, please put in the comment section below which video, and maybe want to put a link down in the comment section below. Who do you want me to react to next? So before I let you go, please check out these two videos right here. If you feel that we've provided value in this episode for you, please consider liking this video. If you watch a couple of our videos and you've taken some value from them too as well, and you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Again, we've got some big goals and dreams once you get to 250,000 subs, but we gotta get to 250,000 subs. I think right now a little over 140, 141, somewhere in there. But I got some big goals and dreams. Maybe we have a conference where a Waka Flocka or a Dame Dash comes in and we have an opportunity to spend some time with them and, and interview them on stage and you get to learn from them firsthand of what their experiences are in businesses, entrepreneurship, and with their finances. So that being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, Continue to smart, continue to smart, and be money smart today.